First memories of getting involved in music. Um, there was a great deal of music around our house, uh, born in Boston, raised in North Carolina. So my earliest musical memories, um, my parents were very musical. My mother was, wanted to be uh, a singer. She, uh, uh, she went to the New England Conservatory for voice, but she was coming up at a time where the ability to be a pop singer wasn't widely available. And uh, uh, she met my father, who was at, uh, doing his residency, he went to Harvard Medical School and was doing his residency at Massachusetts General. And uh, he had been raised in North Carolina and uh, moved with uh, uh, his wife, my mother, and uh, they had five children. And we lived in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where uh, he was dean of the medical school there. And uh, that was... The, that was the background. Um, uh, Broadway musicals, pop music all the time. Woody Guthrie and then for me, Peter, Paul and Mary, Bob Dylan, uh, the Kingston Trio, our oldest brother Alex infused a lot of uh, R&B, Bobby Blue Bland. Ike and Tina Turner, Elvis Presley, he brought that in and, uh, and that expanded the horizon. Uh, the, uh, my mother bought instruments to have around the house and she bought fine instruments. She bought instruments that um, would make the poor player sound better. Uh, often parents will buy a less of a quality and the reason why is that they don't want to waste the money if the kid doesn't pick it up. The problem is that they, you can't make a bad instrument sound good so you guarantee a, a failure without providing the resource. And so that was the underpinning that was there. So it sounds like your mother, and at least your mother, I don't know about your father, was really supportive of your creative uh, you know, outlet. My parents were, and my father, yes, but my mother in particular, were enormously supportive of what we wanted to do. I have a very clear memory as a little boy, five six years old, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. It was hot. It was pre-ubiquitous air conditioning. And I went to my mother and I said, I'd like to build a swimming pool. And having a sense, even at that young age, that this was going to be a difficult process, I watched her like a hawk. And I just, I looked at her face and I studied it so carefully as I made the request, because what I was looking for was a sign of incredulity, bemusement, and it never came across her face. She simply looked at me. She took the request, as usual, with complete um, seriousness. And she looked at me and said, well, where would you build this pool? And I said, well, I'd build it in the front yard. Um, and she thought a moment. She said, well, I think you ought to build it out back. Uh, we had a field out there. I think you ought to go out and build it there. And of course, I took a shovel and I probably didn't get one spoonful and went on to something else. But I never forgot that look, how seriously she took the idea. And that's what happens. Um, that there was never any incredulity from my parents when I said to them, I want to be a creator. There's also another important point here. I was raised in North Carolina. I was raised in the South. And the South in the 1950s 
was still essentially disenfranchised from the Union. The Civil War had really cost the South its franchise. This, uh, the South was hobbling itself with two very serious burdens. One was their insistence on segregation. And segregation, when you have a large uh, 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 African-American population, is stunningly expensive and difficult to maintain. You, it just takes up huge resource. That's number one. Also, it makes you a pariah <laughs> in lots of other places. Um, it gives you a bad rep. And number two was the lack of air conditioning. Uh, uh, the uh, molecular motion transfer is very essential to the Southern experience, as we know, sitting in this room right now. So, what happened in the South is because you were disenfranchised relative to New York City or Chicago or New York or San Francisco, any of these sort of uh, hot spots. The idea of being a creator for a living was looked on as reasonable. You, uh, you were, if you were coming from the South, the sense was that you were already had a strike against you. So you might, if so, if you were never going to reach the top echelon of being a lawyer or a doctor or in those worlds because of your heritage, then you might as well be a dancer, a painter, a potter, a playwright, a poet. And so the, the notion, it was in the water of North Carolina that to be a creator was a perfectly legitimate way to make a living. And when I was 13, I played at a country club in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and somebody gave me $20 for doing it, and I thought to myself, oh, I can make a living doing this. Also, academically, uh, uh, I was challenged. I hated school, and school hated me. And as a result, uh, when I realized that I could invent another life for myself through uh, being a creator, that uh, I was on that train.